Regardless of like, fuck bitches get money, these hoes ain't shit. Like, you know, aside from all that, hey, you know, we, we say bitches ain't shit, but treat women with respect. Bad and What's poppin' fam? Your boy Jay Sama's in the building today. And uh, guess what? Uh, today's another episode of Candid Culture, the show where we talking about some uh, entertainment commentary, you know, give, give a little opinions on stuff, and then uh, potentially give a life lesson at the end if that's absolutely necessary. Today, it might not be though. So today, um, nothing super outrageous is going on except for this Snoop Dogg interview on The Breakfast Club. Now, if you guys know me, you know I love The Breakfast Club. I love Charlemagne the God and uh, pretty much everything that he does as well as Envy and Angela, but Charlemagne specifically. So, um, one of my favorite rappers of all time is Snoop Dogg. My, the very first music album I ever bought was Rhythm and Gangster when I was in middle school. I remember I saved up my money for that. I knew it was coming out. I walked. Uh, at the time I was living in Compton, I walked from uh, Compton Boulevard in Central, which is where I lived, basically, and my school was right there. I did school that day, walked all the way to Gardena, okay, which was past the 110 freeway, and if you guys know anything about LA, you know that's a huge fucking distance. That's literally citywide. I went to this Target, stood in line, bought the album, put it, like, listened to the whole album on my way back to school, only to have uh, my CD player, because we had CD players at the time, taken away in class because I was listening to it when I was coming into class. So that's just like how, how dedicated I was to this man's music. And so Snoop Dogg was also somebody where I was born and raised in Long Beach. So uh, he's an icon to me. Like there's, there's literally nothing that this man could say. He was literally like, like before it was like Kanye West, Snoop Dogg was above that. You know what I mean? As far as like influence for me, Snoop Dogg was like drastically above that. This, this gap doesn't even, there's not enough screen room. Okay. To, to show you guys the gap between where Kanye West was and where Snoop Dogg is. Okay. So Snoop Dogg was always Snoop D-O-double-G, uh, Snoop D-O-double-G. You know, he was the triple OG. That was, that was my guy. Everything he said I was down with any form of music I was down with he put out when he was Snoop Lion and did the reggae album I was down with that him doing the gospel album. I'm down with that. So Really, I've been listening to Snoop Dogg and Snoop Dogg's influence and the things that he has to say throughout my entire life So really, I just want to let y'all know Snoop Dogg is the grandfather of this show of the canon culture show I mean like he's really just the father because because grandfather would be you know, we're talking like Charlie Wilson, we're talking like 70s, you know, 60s, 70s type icons and stuff like that. But we, you know, we don't, we haven't really gotten into the flow chart. Well, one, one of these days we'll get into the flow chart of like, who really is like the most influential when it comes to canon culture. So, and I feel like Snoop Dogg is the OG. You know, like Snoop Dogg is one of the people that pushes a canon of be a better person, don't be a fucking asshole, treat your elders with respect. Like there was, it's it's such a powerful vibe between me and him like I would love if I don't really have guests on canon culture very often unless I feel like they have something to say for a specific topic but I would love to not only interview but have a conversation with Snoop Dogg because he came from a lot of the neighborhoods that I came from spent a lot of the same time with the same type of people that I spent time with and they you know he just grew to be this amazing rapper and this amazing artist humanitarian he was just a great fucking person he is a great person so if there's anybody that would teach the show of canon culture bet like like that's not right if there's anybody that canon culture is built around around their philosophies or stuff like that or who influences the show the most it would be snoop dogg Absolutely. The things that Snoop Dogg had to say, not only in this interview, but multiple interviews, the, uh, go check it out. I'm going to include a link down in the description because it's a little hard for me to talk about because I agree with so many things. Like there is just so much about empowerment and his opinions on Kanye and just everything in general, his comments about Donald Trump, like everything literally lines up with what I believe and what I feel and stuff like that. So it's very interesting to see a situation where I'm speechless. Like I almost don't have anything to say because I feel like everything that could be said about an episode of Canon culture or any episode of Canon culture, not just this one specifically is in this interview. So really 
uh, Snoop Dogg puts you in this place, uh, puts me in this place of when I listen to him speak and I listen to the things that he has to say, these are, it's OG advice. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's one of those things where you have to worry about, you know, like mental health and just being a good man, being a good person in general. Like you get that type of vibe out of this. And that's really all canon culture is about is yes, it's about entertainment and me trying to find a way to plug myself into whatever entertainment avenue I can get in for the time being. But it's also about teaching you guys lessons that I learned the hard way. Like, you know, uh, you know, whenever you can do the right thing. If you see somebody having trouble putting, you know, groceries or walking across the street or anything like that, literally that is what canon culture is about, is about pushing the canon, uh, the storyline, if you will, because a lot of people don't know what the word canon means. It's about pushing your storyline of being the best you that you can be, okay? And that is a cultural thing, okay? We want it to be part of our culture. Plus, I'm also a part of many different cultures, I would have to say. Black culture, nerd culture, um, you know, music culture. Like, these are things that a lot of people can't really understand what the word culture really revolves around. And it's really just the identity of a specific type of group. And I'm part of so many that I feel like my canon is to contribute whatever it is that I can to any of the, any and every one of these groups. So that is essentially the premise of the show. And Snoop Dogg is a very good, I feel like he should have his own podcast. Like I would love to have a Snoop Dogg podcast. That would be fucking amazing. The life lessons that you could learn from this man is just, I feel like he has so many things to teach. And I'm just very interested to learn them. Like in this, just, I feel like it was a short interview because it was gone like that. Like there was just so many things that could have been touched up on. And there's so many things that, you know, when he was talking about Tupac and how Tupac was as a person. And now I always knew when I was growing up, I always knew there was something different about Tupac. Like when I would listen to his music, cause he died like when I was two. So I didn't really get grow up with a chance of like watching Snoop Dogg put out music. Uh, I'm Snoop Dogg, uh, watching Tupac put out music because, because he had, you know, was, was murdered. So growing up, you know, in the early nineties and like me going to school and elementary school and stuff like that, we did listen to Tupac. Tupac is something that we listened to. We did lose and listen to, uh, Snoop Dogg, um, Dr. Dre, you know, Ice Cube, like a lot of these, uh, artists were things that I grew up with and they always, regardless of like, fuck bitches, get money. These hoes ain't shit. Like, you know, aside from all that, their core values were always, you know, Hey, you know, we, we say bitches ain't shit, but treat women with respect. You know, don't be a fucking asshole. Like we, their, their canon was be a better person. We may make all this wild music and do all these wild things, but their canon was be a good person. You know what I mean? So, and like dealing with, uh, especially where I grew up at, uh, dealing with a lot of the kind of like outside forces and stuff like that, you kind of needed these idols to speak on a lot of this stuff or when, in, even when they were on interviews on the radio, you know, like I remember power 106 back in the day with big boys neighborhood. Okay. This was like way back in the day, man. And he, he they would have Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and these guys would just talk about what it was like to grow up in the hood and how they want everybody to prosper. They want everybody to succeed. Like gangbanging is just a thing that it's a tribe mentality. Like you just, you just do it just because. And I, I've, I've had my, my share in my experience of gangbang culture. And that is not necessarily uh, the best thing in the world. <laughs> okay. So if you know me, you know what I'm talking about, but like it was always trying to push the canon of Hey, we got to do better as people. And then also on the breakfast club, they had Angela Rye on and Angela Rye. Oh my God. I am so in love with this woman. Like, Oh, she's just everything out of her mouth. Just sounds like magic because I agree with a lot of the, you know, things that she has to say about economic empowerment and like, really like there was, there was a comment. She actually said she was talking about chance the rapper when he said that not all black people have to be Democrats, which I think is great and everything. You know, I'll also include a link to that one down below, but without like butchering what she said, cause I would have to read it verbatim. Andrew Lurie is one of those people who, if you listen to her podcast, she just seems like a very genuine person and she really wants everybody to prosper. She wants everybody to have a good time. I mean, really guys, that's all anybody should be doing. Like the people that are, uh, anti like, you know, um, 
I guess not free thinking, but anti-open-minded, racism, bigots and shit like that. Like, why do you want the world to be such a small place? I don't understand. Like, there's just so many things that you could enjoy in this world. Try giving a racist Indian food and don't tell him it's Indian. And they'd be like, man, this shit is good. Like, that's Indian food you're eating. Ah, I can't eat this shit. Like, you know, like that just sounds so stupid to me. Like the idea that you can't, uh, but then again, that's racism in general. Like, I just don't understand it. And now I have my occasional, you know, Caucasian jokes or whatever, but it's just, because it's just comedy. It's fucking hilarious. But <laughs> aside from that, really, it's like, why do you want the world to be so small? And why do you want it to be just the way that you want it? I want everybody to live their type of way that they want to live and be happy because you only live one life, essentially. So who are you to decide what I can and can't do with my body, what I can and can't do with my religion and my beliefs and things like that? But then again, at the same time, I also think that it's the same philosophy of uh, Philip DeFranco calls them goat fuckers international is uh, like, you know, groups like ISIS and stuff like that, which don't represent the entire Muslim company, like look, company. <laughs> they don't represent all Muslims at all in any way, shape or form. It's literally this much like in, in a huge pool of like Muslim beliefs and stuff like that. But I also think having violence against people that don't believe the same things you do is just stupid to me. It's a waste of human flesh. It's a waste of human energy. Now, if some of you motherfuckers want to kill yourselves over that, over that dumb shit, be my guest, but that's just don't include me in your mess. Okay. I don't want to have to clean nothing up. You, you do it somewhere where it's okay to dispose of garbage. All right. So I'm just saying there's a whole lot that you could learn from both of these interviews. So once again, I'm going to include links to those down in the description, guys, just go and check them out. These are two people that I feel are my personal idols. So I've been working on my, um, I haven't shown you guys, which I'll have to like take a picture and like put it on Twitter or something of my vision board. And there's a couple of spots. So now I have to put one of, let's see, I have to fit one of Michael B. Jordan closer towards the top. And then Angela Rye, I want to put in there somewhere. Like there's just, and then Snoop Dogg's probably going to go over there. There's, if I haven't shown my vision board to you guys, I will one day. It's just not finished. It's not even close to finish. Like I still have to fill in a whole bunch of patches and stuff like that. And essentially the vision board is me just having a realization of the things that I want every single day when I get up and I look at it and I'm just like, okay, these are all things that I want to acquire, or these are things that I believe in, or these are things that I'm interested in, places I wanna go, people I wanna meet, uh, things I wanna have, what I wanna look like, like there's things like this. And so I'll have to make a separate video one of these days to actually show you guys. So anyway, uh, we're gonna kinda cut today's episode a little bit short. Um, what I'm gonna do is Today, what we are going to do is I'm going to tell you today's kind of like philosophy or like message of the day or whatever. First of all, what we got to stop doing is what well, we what we have to start doing is I think as people just in general, we got to start shaming racism again. Like this shit is just wild, fam. Like in I, I don't I don't really like to speak on my political views and stuff like that, but it's usually pretty obvious. Like I don't really fuck with Trump like that, but in this post Trump world, I don't know if it's that there's more like racism and like bullshit going on. I don't know if there's more of it or we're just seeing more of it because of social media and it's just been the same every like all the time or what the, what the deal might be. But just know that when you see that type of shit, you gotta at least say something. Like Angela uh, on The Breakfast Club, she actually was talking about, um, you know, police brutality and police reform and stuff like that. And Charlemagne pre presented a question like, well, what can we do? And it wasn't really like much of a direct answer because it's like, what do you, what do you do when you see police brutality happening? It's not like you can approach a cop and like punch him in the face. Hey, that's wrong. Like, you know, you can't, you can't do that. So what is it that you're supposed to do when like the girl at the Waffle House and she was literally getting dragged out of her fucking top. Like they did not assist her at all. They pulled her shirt down and like all this other shit and like roughed her up just to be dragged out of a Waffle House. First of all, I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you're a man that does that, that's some fucked up shit. Like you're some other type of fucking asshole. Like you got to be a special type of asshole to do some shit like that. But it's like, what do you do? The least you can do is say something. You know what I mean? Like, and I feel like in this post Trump world, we all have to, you know, do the best that we can 
to make the world a better place until this motherfucker is out of here because it's just some things that i there are policies that i that he has that i do agree with like denuclearization of north korea and stuff like that but then again the whole mexican border wall thing i don't fuck with i'm like yo that's you fucked up fam like that shit is wild to me but without getting into too much it's just we gotta start working on on being better people and hopefully with this show i can you know do something like that and we didn't even talk much about like the entertainment portions of stuff today and we're already out of time and i feel like i've only been talking for five minutes so maybe i'll like live stream or something or i'll put out another uh a kind of like a second canon culture episode sometime this weekend but let me know you guys' thoughts down below make sure to hit like on this video if you, if you enjoyed today's video also i'm not even gonna gonna say that you can't dislike the video if you do dislike the video i would like to ask that you scroll down to the comment section and at least let me know why you dislike the video subscribe to the channel if you guys are new this has been your boy just j sama i will catch you guys next week make sure to keep it canon <laughs>